I took your liver and we cut off two thirds of your liver and left one third left, it would regenerate the rest of the two thirds. And, and in your book, you really highlight that in addition to angiogenesis, there's really, there's with angiogenesis, there's five areas. There's five sort of key areas that we have to look at these sort of systems in the body to understand what happens when we go from being healthy to being in a place of disease. But let's walk through them, starting off with the, you know, you can pick which one you want to start off with next. And, and we'll give a little bit of an overview, just like we did with angiogenesis. Yeah, sure, Drew. I mean, this is such a great question. I, I'll tell you how I got into it, because I think that's the best way um, uh, to, 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 to articulate this for your viewers. Um, you know, as a doctor, I was I was always trained to one, wonder why somebody got sick. What did they do? What was going on in their bodies that led to an illness? And in fact, most patients always ask me, you know, like, well, so what happened? How did I get this? You know, how did I contract this uh, condition? Um, and that's how I was trained to think for, for decades. But reality is, um, and, and, and as a researcher, that's what I was looking at is what is the underlying cause of illness? But I think I, I discovered there was a much more interesting question. And that more interesting question is, why don't we get sick more often? If you think about it, like kids are help, usually pretty healthy. And actually, when you're in the prime of your life, you're generally pretty healthy. Yeah, you might get a flu or might get a cold every now and then. It's only when you get older that you start getting sick. And the more interesting question is like, why don't kids get cancer more often than they do? Why don't healthy adults get more heart disease? Why don't they get diabetes, you know, like more often than they do? I mean, some people do at a younger age. And so that's really by turning that question about why did I get sick into why aren't I getting sick more often? That led me down this direct path to saying, what does a body doing to prevent illness? And if, and, and what is health itself? If, you know, the, the, the question, the way that I would use to answer the question, what is health is like, yeah, well, you know, you're healthy if you're not sick. And I think that's how most people would answer it. Turns out health is not just the absence of disease. Health is the result of our body working, firing on all cylinders to keep us that way and to and ward off illness. And, um, and what keeps us healthy, what wards off illness, what is firing in all cylinders are health defense systems. Now I found five health defense systems and I wrote about five in my book, Eat to Beat Disease, because I've worked in the drug development field in each of these areas. Angiogenesis is one of them. Let's talk about all five of them first. Blood vessels, I've, I've done drug development in, in helping to grow blood vessels and stop blood vessels. Second are stem cells. I'll come back to that. I've done work, decades of work in developing regenerative medicine to try to regenerate organs. Uh, it's amazing what you can actually do in the biotech world with that. Third is the microbiome. I've done research on the microbiome with colleagues at MIT and elsewhere. Fourth is um, genes, our DNA. And most people think of our DNA as sort of the genetic code. Um, I've done gene therapy. So I, I've actually helped to develop gene therapies. Um, and fifth is our immune system. And our immune system, which is hardwired, and this is more important than ever before, in immunotherapy for cancer, for example, is one of the most powerful breakthroughs in, in, medical, in the medical world today. So I've got the street cred of doing drug development in each of these areas. But rather than thinking about using drugs to activate these systems, if we turn the sock inside out and take a look at, okay, so how do these systems actually defend our health? Well, our circulation prevents, um, uh, that the feeds our, prevents disease by feeding our healthy cells and preventing bad diseases from growing like cancer. Our stem cells, by the way, um, uh, you may not know this, but all of us have about 75 a million stem cells that are in our bodies at any given time. And we're actually made out of stem cells because when, when we were in our mom's wombs, the only reason our bodies were able to even form a human figure, like, you know, the little Play-Doh that kind of get forms humans in the womb is, is because of stem cells. And we retain some of those after we're born and we lock them up in our bone marrow and in our skin and elsewhere. And our bodies regenerate continuously that's one of our health defense systems because you know you know as we age we need to repair ourselves from the inside out like we know um, our hair regrows for most people we know that um even our gut our, our mucous membranes are our, our, our uh, this sort of skin in our mouth we grow 
anybody who's ever you know um, had a really hot uh, something a hot piece of food and you burn your mouth and you're like man like it it totally s screws you up next day <laughs> you're back to normal because your your skin in your mouth your mucous membrane regenerate okay it's like eating a Dorito and you scrape the top of your mouth next day you'll be fine because of regeneration um, but is what's amazing is that our organs are generated from the inside out if I took your liver and we cut off two-thirds of your liver and left one-third left it would regenerate the rest of the two-thirds so just like a starfish you regenerate an arm um, of your lung if I cut off the tip of your lung um, it would grow right back and what we're starting to realize is that the, the playbook of human biology is being written is being rewritten because when you and I were kids I'm sure our grade school teachers taught us the same thing starfish and salamanders regenerate but people don't wrong people regenerate and so now we can actually try to coax this regeneration to go faster it's one of our defense systems but um and, and while biotech people are trying to figure out ways to make us regenerate foods can also cause us to prompt regeneration as well which is really cool um foods like chocolate foods like dark cacao like dark chocolate cacao uh, polyphenols can actually stimulate regeneration um uh, uh, there's all kinds of other uh uh uh, uh, biotech kind of things that can actually do this, but Mother Nature has laced um, things that can be regenerative, like ursolic acid and fruit peel can coax our stem cells to come out of our um, bone marrow to, to stimulate regeneration as well. I mean, imagine a future in which we understood how to match the, uh, the substance in a food that naturally occurs with something that we need, like brain regeneration for dementia, for example. That would really be a game changer. And so that's where the future of understanding our body's hardwired self-defenses for regeneration goes. Microbiome, you know, we've got like 39 uh, trillion bacteria in our body. Most of them are in our colon. And we know that when our gut bacteria is healthy, it controls our hormones, it controls our uh, cholesterol metabolism, it controls how our, 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 how our body uses blood sugars. When we screw up our um, gut bacteria, it screws up everything, like literally, We've got uh, an ecosystem inside our body that if we don't take care of that ecosystem, um, it destroys, it wrecks the rest of our body. And, and something that's stunning to know, for example, is that um, uh, uh, is how vulnerable the system is. Artificial sweeteners, like you find in a diet soda, can in 24 hours overnight start to destroy your gut microbiome. The healthy gut bacteria start to change. They don't like that artificial sweetener because they're trying. We don't absorb those those calories, right? Those are the, the those are the non-caloric sweeteners. So we get the taste in the front end, and the back end we don't absorb it, so we don't get the calories. But guess what? Our bacteria are eating those things too, and they don't like it. We're poisoning the field when those bacteria um, don't like it and they start dying. It affects our metabolism. It affects um, even our hormone, our brain hormones. So. We want to keep our, our our gut defense system, which is tied to our immune system, by the way, really, really healthy. Um, our uh, DNA is another defense system. Um, people don't realize this, but we make 10,000 mistakes in our DNA every single day that causes mutations, which then can cause cancer. So fortunately, our DNA system defends us by fixing itself. And our immune system, of course, is um, like an our ultimate shield um, uh, to prevent us from bad guys coming in from the outside whether it's covid or whether it's the flu or whether it's you know some other uh, uh germ but also our immune system protects us from bad guys on the inside of our body and that's those cancers that we started talking about our immune system conducts surveillance to take out those bad guys inside our skin as well